Hi everyone, welcome to session five of week seven in virology part one. This week we're talking about DNA synthesis and this session I want to focus on two pretty large DNA viruses, that is viruses with quite large DNA genomes and how they replicate their DNA. And the first one is herpes simplex virus. This is a member of the family herpes viruses or herpes viridae. Uh, these are viruses with rather large genomes ranging from 120 to 220,000 base pairs in length. And some of the famous members include herpes simplex virus shown here, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, and a few others. These genomes are double-stranded linear DNAs, and as we've mentioned before, the uh, one of the features of these genomes is that they are present in large and short segments that can be inverted with respect to one another. So you can have four different combinations of L and S with them inverted in two different ways. This virus, these viruses have three different origins of replication in Ori L and two Ori S origins, as you can see here. The interesting aspect of this uh, virus that I want to talk about in this session is that the DNA enters as the cell as a linear molecule, and there it apparently is converted to a circle, and it then replicates as a rolling circle. These origins are actually active in different conditions in the cell. That's another interesting feature of this virus, and that's something we'll talk about in the last session of this week. But for now, let's focus on the mechanism of DNA replication, um, how it's primed, and how it deals with the 5 prime N problem. All right, in the virion, the viral DNA is linear as it's shown here, and we're showing that again on this slide. So at the top here is herpes viral DNA with uh, the, the uh, two, the L and the S segments. This comes into the cell, enters the nucleus, and is circularized by a cellular enzyme called DNA ligase 4, or another name for which is XRCC4. So again, ligases are enzymes that join the ends of DNA together covalently. They take a 5' prime end and a 3' prime end, and they make a phosphodiester bond, so they covalently link the DNA. So if you put a ligase together with herpes DNA, you get a circle, a covalently closed circle, and this is what happens when the viral DNA gets into cells. It goes in the nucleus, is circularized, and the key here is that a host protein is responsible for the circularization. Now, we have a circular double-stranded DNA, you're probably thinking, well, it must replicate like SV40, uh, bidirectional, uh, semi-discontinuous replication with a replication, two replication forks and a bubble, and the answer is no. It doesn't replicate that way at all. Uh, it replicates by the rolling circle mechanism, and that's shown on this slide. The rolling circle mechanism of replication was actually first discovered in a bacteriophage. Uh, that is a virus that infects bacteria. The particular bacteriophage uh, in which it was discovered is called Phyx-174, uh, which is a phage with a double-stranded circular DNA genome to begin with. It's like that in the particle. However, it's subsequently been found to occur in cells infected with another bacteriophage called Lambda, and the Lambda genome is much like the herpes virus genome, it's a double-stranded linear DNA. When it gets into the bacterial cell, it's circularized and it replicates by rolling circles. So uh, that's shown here. So this happens for Phyx174 lambda and herpes viruses. So here is the circular double-stranded DNA on the left. The first thing that happens is a nick is introduced into the DNA by an endonuclease. And that nick, of course, is important because it gives you a free 3' prime hydroxyl. So you don't, you don't have to make a bubble. You don't have to make a, have an origin where, although this does initiate at an origin, 
You don't have to have an origin binding protein that denatures the two strands and allows the DNA polymerase to begin using a primer. The primer here is the viral DNA formed by this NIC. It gives you a three prime hydroxyl. The DNA polymerase can come in. This is an origin of replication in here, one of those specific herpes viral uh, origins of replication. The viral polymerase can come in, use the three prime hydroxyl as a primer, and begin synthesizing the complementary strand, and that's shown in red here. And this occurs by displacement synthesis, continuous displacement synthesis on this strand. As the red uh, product extends, the other strand is displaced, as you would expect for displacement synthesis, and this red complementary strand is made in a continuous manner all around the circle. Uh, and eventually it makes a full-length circle, but then it keeps going around and around and around, and it just makes a long DNA product, which is made up of genome-length pieces. So remember, we started with a blue uh, genome, and then we attached a red complement to it here. And so you see the original blue genome is here, and then it's followed by the first product, the first red product that was made. And after that is made, the enzyme goes around the circle again. So basically it's making what is known as a concatamer. It is multiple units of the genome linked together. They're all covalently linked because they're made by the polymerase just cranking around the circle, if you will. Now... Those, of course, have to be made double-stranded because the genome is double-stranded. How does that happen? That happens by discontinuous DNA synthesis. And I have to tell you that uh, these arrows are going in the wrong direction. This is a figure from Principles of Virology. And only as I was uh, working on this lecture did I see that this is, in fact, wrong. These arrows should be going in the other direction because... Synthesis is always in the 5 to 3 prime direction. But here's the 5 prime end of the template. So the 3 prime end would be, well, that's the 3 prime end there. So the template is always read in a 3 to 5 prime direction. So the synthesis is the opposite of what these arrows show. Uh, the real point here is, is, of course, that it's discontinuous. It cannot happen continuously because uh, the, the template has to be exposed and polymerase is put on. Uh, in order to cover it. If you just started a polymerase here, of course, you'd reach the end and you'd not copy the whole thing. So you have to copy here as this is exposed and copy here and copy here and so forth. And those are all um, initiated by RNA primers. And there is no end problem because you uh, are just packaging genome length pieces. So what happens is you get a concatamer of genomes you um, then package those into the viral particle, and the idea is that exact genome lengths are recognized by the packaging machinery and cleaved as they enter the capsid. And we'll talk about that in more detail later on uh, as we discuss how packaging occurs. Now, if you think about this, the very last copy that you made is going to have, by discontinuous synthesis, is going to have an end problem, and it's not clear how that's resolved. It may be that that is one out of hundreds of copies that are in this concatamer, and so it's just discarded. Uh, the others, of course, will all be exact genome, double-strand DNA copies, and so there is no end problem, except perhaps for that last piece. Uh, some of the viral gene products needed to replicate herpes viral DNAs are shown here. Uh, this is a big DNA virus, so it encodes a lot of the replication machinery, uh, these three proteins form the primase, uh, so this virus does not use the cellular primase to produce those RNA primers. Uh, a processivity protein, which helps the polymerase, the DNA polymerase, which is also encoded by the virus to simply um, produce or synthesize more bases. That's what processivity means, to go farther from uh, an origin. An origin binding protein a single-stranded DNA binding protein, and, of course, the DNA polymerase. Now, all of these proteins are necessary for viral DNA replication, but they are not enough. It's not enough. Something else is needed, and what that is is not known. So clearly, even though this virus can encode a lot of the DNA replication machinery, it's not enough to do it on its own. It still needs something from the cell. 
and what that is isn't yet known. All right, the next virus, the next big uh, DNA virus I want to tell you about is pox virus. Uh, these are larger than the adenoviruses, uh, sorry, than the herpes viruses. They have genomes ranging from 130 to 375,000 base pairs in length. They are double-stranded DNA. They are linear molecules, but the ends are covalently linked, as we mentioned previously. So the 5 and 3 prime ends at each end of the DNA are, are covalently joined in a phosphodiester bond. And so we call that a terminal loop. If you melted or denatured this DNA and made single strands, it would form a single-stranded circle. Now, pox virus is unusual among all the viruses that we've talked about so far this week in that all the other viruses replicate in the nucleus. Their DNAs go right into the nucleus, and that is where they replicate them. Pox viruses do it in the cytoplasm. They set up their own factories in the cytoplasm, which are needed to replicate the virus. They do not go into the nucleus, and for the most part, DNA synthesis is independent uh, of cell proteins. Now, this virus makes a lot of proteins that are involved in DNA replication, but it segregates them out of the nucleus, puts them in a factory in the cytoplasm, and that's where it replicates its genome. So it's very different in this way that it stays out of the nucleus. Now, the last viruses we talked about, herpes viruses, make a lot of the DNA replication machinery themselves, but they do that in the nucleus. They replicate their DNA in the nucleus uh, where it's mixed in with cellular DNA, but these viruses keep it separate. Here's a picture of infected cells to show you what these factories look like. So these are pox virus infected cells, and they're stained on the left with a dye that stains DNA blue. And this big blob of blue is the cell nucleus. And then you can see the cytoplasm uh, is full of blue staining areas. On the middle is uh, the same cell stained for um, one of the viral proteins, a DNA binding protein. So this is a, a protein that is known to be important for DNA replication of the viral genome. Uh, and is known to be present in the factories. So this is basically a stain for the factories. And you can see all these dots in the cytoplasm. Remember, the dark place is now the nucleus of the cell because there's no viral protein in there, at least not this viral protein. And the, and the red dots in the cytoplasm are the cytoplasmic factories where the virus is replicating its genome. Now, if you merge the two stains, the blue and the red for DNA and the DNA binding protein, you can see that the uh, kind of purplish color is in these factories. So the factories contain viral DNA and DNA binding protein. So that's what they look like. How does this genome replicate? So let's start on the upper left with a, a line drawing of the genome. Remember, it is a, a double-stranded DNA with the ends joined. So it has terminal loops, and we've shown them as two kind of barbell-looking things on either side. So what happens is the DNA is nicked by a viral enzyme right here on the left. The terminus is unwound, and the three prime end formed by the nick right here is a primer for the DNA polymerase. And the DNA polymerase copies the single-stranded region at the left end. That's shown in red here, the, the product uh, that is made. The two ends can now form hairpin structures, and that's shown in the next end, the hairpin ends refold. And this is done so that you will not get duplication at the left end, because if you didn't do this and somehow just started copying from the left end, you'd have a duplication of this hairpin sequence. So when the two hairpins form on both strands, you can see now you have a three prime hydroxyl at the end of this arrow, the DNA polymerase will now continue to copy, but it will skip this uh, hairpin end so it doesn't duplicate it. So the three prime end of that hairpin end is then extended by the polymerase that's shown here in the orange. You start to copy the other strand. You displace the other strand. It's displacement synthesis. Eventually this orange product is going to continue around the entire molecule, and you can see that on the upper right here. So here's where we began. Uh, we primed around, completed the strand. At the other uh, hairpin end, the polymerase continued. 
and extend it on the other stand as well. And then it stopped at the hairpin at the other end. Again, it doesn't want to copy through the hairpin because it would duplicate it. So now you have a double length molecule that needs to be uh, resolved. This is called a concatamer. It's a concatamer where n equals 2. Uh, the res resolution is done by, again, endonuclease that nicks here and here. It separates the two molecules. Uh, and then finally, the nicks are ligated by a DNA ligase, and the product is two complete genomes, very much like what we started with. And you can see that it's semi-conservative because each genome has one of the parental strands and a new product or daughter strand. So a very interesting mode of replication. Again, the primer is the viral DNA itself, just like the parvoviruses, and there's no end problem as a consequence of this uh, configuration. As I said, the virus encodes a lot of enzymes that are needed for DNA replication. It's completely independent of the host cell because it does this in the cytoplasm. It makes all the enzymes it's needing. And you can see them here. The polymerase, of course, processivity factors, primases, topoisomerases, single-stranded DNA binding proteins, DNA ligases, and enzymes involved in nucleotide metabolism as well. It has to make all of these because it doesn't have access to them. Most of these are in the, site, as in, are in the nucleus of the cell, of course, participating in DNA replication of the cell DNA, and they're not accessible to pox virus. So it's chosen to do its thing in the cytoplasm, and as a consequence, it's got to make everything it needs. And that's why the genomes of these viruses are so big. Mm -hmm.